Hello, and welcome back to today's American Flyer Trains. For this video and series of sessions, we're on the bench looking at a modification of some American Flyer rolling stock. Prior to the video portion of this presentation starting, you saw a slide presentation of the anatomy showing the anatomy of a 977 uh, operating brakeman American Flyer caboose. Uh, and you also saw some stages of the installation uh, of a component which will help, I think, with these cabooses, at least their enjoyment. One of the benefits of providing the services that I have provided for American Flyer trains or for customers with their American Flyer trains is I get to sometimes hold stock, uh, sometimes multiples of the same piece, uh, sometimes very unusual pieces that I'll never be able to own, probably will never own, uh, or uh, variations, uh, holding all variations of a single piece. In this case, it's just volume. Uh, what you're seeing is four American Flyer cabooses, three of which are 977s, these, and one 979. Now the 979, as all, all three of these, are the operating brakeman. You can see the operating brakeman on the back of these. Uh, some of them have the rubber brakeman, such as these two, and the other two have the metal brakeman. I own two of these, and I own the 979 and this 977. Now, if you own one of these and operate it, you are well aware that there is a solenoid that causes the operating brakeman to move from the exterior or look like he's hanging off the back of the deck uh, on the porch or next to the fence on the back of the caboose. And then when it's under operation, the brakeman moves to the interior of the deck. That movement is caused by solenoid and solenoids are very noisy. And it's just not very enjoyable to be pulling a train on your layout and the caboose is making a roar buzzing sound that's sometimes louder than the uh, locomotive itself. So what I did on my two, my 979 and my 977, is install a device which quietens that buzzing sound. Well, first let's see what one sounds like. It still has the buzzing sound. This 977, as well as this one, are customer owned. And one is under modification and the other one has not been modified and that's this one. So let's see what it's like having it on the layout. Now I've got it set at 50% power and you'll notice that the brakeman uh, has retracted onto the deck. Uh, but you'll notice how loud the buzzing is. And it pretty much stays that way no matter what degree of power you've applied. You can notice that by the lights, the light going up and down. Now let's look at one that has had a modification to it. And we'll take a look at my 977 with the metal operating brakeman. Brakeman has retracted onto the deck and it's perfectly quiet. And my 979 works with the same feature as well. And it's uh, kind of interesting to note that I've not started working on this customer's 977, but right as I was beginning to film this session, I noticed that the brakeman is on backwards. He's looking toward the rear of the train or off the rear of the deck, not forward, and his lantern is toward the interior of the deck rather than the exterior of the deck. So uh, either this came out of the A.C. Gilbert factory without a lot of quality checks or somebody has modified this. And these men are not too difficult to get off, but one of the uh, side effects of pulling them off is you can chip the paint, even on a rubber brakeman. And that's because they have to undergo a lot of some bending uh, to get them off uh, because you have to get the arm out to get to the mechanism. What I'm installing in the customer's cabooses are what I installed in mine, and that is a full wave bridge rectifier from Radio Shack. This one is four amps and 50 volts. This one looks like some of maybe the earlier packaging. This is one I have maintained in my stock, and then I've just reordered uh, four more that uh, I found on the internet, and I may have gotten them on eBay, I can't remember but it's the same product, maybe in a little bit later packaging. 
Now you noticed in the previous videos that I had it in several stages and here basically are the steps. On the full wave bridge rectifier, you'll see that it is marked with both a positive and a negative sign and sides and it has four fingers that you can attach wires to or put this down into a slot. And here is the basic installation of one of these in a caboose. First, you'll separate the wire, this one right here that goes to the forward truck, and then separate this wire that's coming off the uh, coil that goes to the front truck. This being the rear truck closest to the solenoid. And that's all there is to it to get started, so just sever those. And then, of course, clean the ends off and expose the wiring. The step is to take the one that goes to the rear truck and connect to the positive side of the rectifier. Then take the one that goes from the uh, solenoid to the front truck and connect it to the farthest most negative side. So that's kind of like step one. So you'll have these two wires going to the outside post or pins on the rectifier. And then you're gonna join the wire that came from the rear truck closest to the wire that normally would have gone to the rear truck. So it kind of like it completes the circuit around this way. Then you'll take the wire that went to the front truck and connect it on the last post right here. So now that flow goes from here across the full wave rectifier and back out. And that's it. Now some of my techniques of the actual implementation or installation is you're going to probably have to extend these two wires that come off the off the uh, coil, off the solenoid. So I had to get some maybe two inch sections of a number 22 wire and extend those a little bit. And I make a real tight fitting and then I cover it with a shrink wrap. And I actually extended the other, this one as well. This one would reach, one of these re would reach, uh, I think it was this one, you know, that one would reach, it's far enough. The others I had to extend, well that's all I did. But I did use shrink wrap on them to cover up the um, joining of the two wires, the joint, as well as the solder. So I got all those done. Then I simply place them against the pin, fold the pin over on the wire, solder, and then put shrink wrap on top of that. So every joint now is covered in shrink wrap. Now part of the work, a good bit of the work in doing this, one is extracting the chassis because of the brakeman has to be bent a little bit, his platform. And then the other one is going to be tucking this into the car. And you just want to make sure that you're not probably going to install it on this side, the far side over here, because that's where the movement takes place. You don't want to tuck it into the back, back here, because that's where the bar it extends out onto the deck that operates the brakeman. So you just want to get yourself a lot of room. I would just adjust the wire so they're not pressing against the bulb. And you should be able to pack everything back in uh, in order to get it operative again. Just just be careful. And of course, leave enough play in your wires. Now mine trucks turn, uh, or my customer's trucks turn, and I think mine did too, without moving the uh, pin uh, or the rivet that holds the truck on. But if yours does, that's okay. Just leave enough play in the wire, maybe make a little loop so that it will move right and left without any binding because you'll want it to do that, of course, when it's going around curves. And just make sure that you haven't tucked the wires in too tight. So again, it's just a simple process. Sever both wires that come from the solenoid. The one that normally goes to the rear truck, attached to positive. The one that goes to the front truck, attached to the furthest most negative. Then complete the circuit for the furthest rear truck by attaching it closest to the one that goes to the, uh, had gone to the rear truck. And of course, that only leaves this one in the process of elimination, and you're pretty much done. We can even demonstrate this one. I set this one up only to operate once, and I could not operate it, of course, on the test track, test stand, the test stand track, uh, because it has no wheel. So I just attached one alligator clip uh, from my patch cords, uh, one to the rear truck, the, ch the uh, centered side iron, the centered iron side frame, and one to the front. Uh, centered iron side frame to complete the circuit 
and the brakeman should operate exactly just once because the spring's not on here, so it won't go back out. You see how quiet that was? And I'm going to leave the power applied. And there's absolutely no noise whatsoever. And that's it. The remaining parts of this project are simply the reassembly and the cleaning if you're going to do maintenance. And I highly recommend that you do that. While you've got it apart, go ahead and clean the interior of your solenoid. Also, uh, clean the plunger. This one had uh, rust on it. Believe it or not, inside the plunger, the plunger had rust on this end. So clean that off. I've chipped the man's leg a little bit, but I think I'm going to be able to touch that up with Comet Blue for the customer. And you notice this man is in very good condition as far as face paint and things like that. Even his lantern, and he's a metal man. And my customer's rubber man is in very good condition. And we hope he will not chip uh, when he's removed. But he just is pushed down on a peg, similar to the way the rubber men are held on the hand cars. Not exactly, but similar. So, as I always say about projects I do around the house, there's two phases of any project I just really am not real crazy about. One is demolition, and the other one's cleanup. And that's kind of the same way on these cabooses, getting them apart. Take your time taking these 979 and 977s apart. Uh, I soaked this one, the four uh, points where the pins were pushed in with penetrating oil to make sure I had the easiest route to get them out without any kind of pressure on the deck so that it would be no chipping of paint, or excuse me, no chipping of the plastic. And then I took it very, very easy getting this out until I could see exactly how much I needed to bend the brakeman. You can see how he's bent backwards. And then you'll need that to be in that bent position to reassemble it. And then the very last thing is you'll straighten up the brakeman to put him back in the upright position on the deck. As Mr. Barker says in his book, this isn't difficult. It just needs to be, you need to have a lot of patience uh, in doing this and just be very tedious and very careful to not damage anything. This one is in excellent condition and I look forward to reassembling it for the customer as well as the other one. Thanks again for watching Dave's American Flyer Trains. So long, everyone.